In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a clustered stacked column chart in Excel. It's basically going to look like this. If you ever try to put this together from scratch, you're going to see it's not that easy. Why? Because Excel allows you to insert a clustered column chart, you can insert a stacked column chart, but you don't have an option to insert a clustered column that's stacked. In order to set this up yourself, you just have to take a few steps, which I'm going to show you in this video. I got this question some time ago from an Excel user. I just changed the data set for the purpose of this video. But the idea is this. We have quarterly revenue by division that we want to show in this way. Each column here belongs to one division. But what we want to do is to split each column into two. One part of this shows the revenue of the new apps within that division, and the other column shows basically the rest. And on top here, we have the total value. How can we set this up? Let's do this from scratch right here. The data set that we have is given to us in this form that we have for Q1 this productivity value. This is the value for the entire division. And this 500 is the value of the new apps. So this is a part of this 2000. Okay, so given that, I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go to insert and insert a clustered column chart. First thing I notice is that the queues are here and not here. I want to bring them on the axis. What I have to do is right mouse click, select data, and switch the row and the column. Now I get the quarters right here. Now let's take a closer look at this data set. This first one is the whole productivity. This is the new apps in productivity. So I don't want them right beside each other, but I actually want these ones, the new ones here, to be on top of the totals. One way that occurs to me is to put these on the secondary axis. And a way I can do it fast is to right mouse click, Go to change series chart type and wherever I see this new app to check mark this and say push it on the secondary axis. That looks better but what's the problem here? Look at the axes. 0, 0, 1200, 2500. I have different maximums for the y-axis. I can't have that. They have to be identical. So my primary axis and my secondary axis have to be identical. How can I get them to be identical? Well, I could manually fix them. I could double click on this and fix it to 2500 and fix this one as well to 2500. But I don't want to do that because next month, maybe my maximum is going to be 3000. I want to make this dynamic. The way I can make it dynamic is to introduce one single data point in this chart. That's going to be invisible. No one is going to see it. The purpose of this one single point is to make sure that the maximum of this is going to be identical to this. What number should this data point have? It should have the same maximum number as the primary series. So what's the maximum number here for the primary series? It's 2100. And Excel by default just adds a bit to it. It came to 2500. In order to make my secondary axis match my primary, I need to make sure that I have one single data point that has this number. Right now, I don't. All my numbers are far smaller. That's why Excel is giving me a much smaller maximum for the secondary than my primary. If I just add one series, I can call it invisible value. That's going to be the max value in this data table. And I add this 
on the secondary axis, then I should have the same maximum for the y-axis. To add this in, all I'm going to do is right mouse click, select data, add, series name, that's this one, series value is this one. Say OK. OK. Now it looks like it's messed up everything because it's added a new column here. But I don't need to add this as a column. What I'm going to do is to right mouse click, change series chart type, and change the chart type of this new one that I added from a clustered column to something else that's not a column. So let me go with a line. The line is just one point. No one is going to see it on there. You see, it automatically made the secondary axis identical to the primary. Why did it do that? Well, did you notice that if I just go back, did you notice that the tick mark was there? It added it to the secondary axis by default. So if it didn't do that for you and it added it to the primary, you need to push it to the secondary axis. And now they are the same. If your example was different and your primary values here could be smaller than your secondary values, what you need to do is to add this series again to your chart and have it attached to the primary axis. You would add it in two times, once on the secondary, once on the primary, and this way it doesn't matter which one has the bigger value, it's going to force to make them match. Okay, so that's the trick on getting the same maximums on your primary and your secondary y-axis. All we need to do now is to make some minor cosmetic adjustments to this. My legend, for example, I'm going to push it to the top and I'm going to delete the ones that I don't need. So no one needs to see that I have an invisible value there. I'm just going to click, click and press delete. And these new ones, you can choose to keep them if you want, but I'm just going to remove them from here. I'd rather not have so many different legend text in there. And in fact, in this case, this belongs to one division. The second one is game and so on. So I'm going to change the color of these to something that's going to be obvious that they belong to the same thing. But if you have a different setup, you probably need to keep the additional names for the legend as well. What I'm going to do now is to add the data labels to these. Right mouse click, add data labels. The same for the other series. I'm also going to add the data labels to the bottom stack. To improve the readability of this, what I'm going to do is to reduce the gap width between these stacks so that my data label is going to sit inside the columns. Let's go to the chart options and reduce the gap width to like 70%. I have to do it on both sides, so the primary and for the secondary, the same number. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is to bring these a bit together. They're a bit too far apart. I'm just going to click on one of these stacks, and instead of minus 27% for the overlap, I'll do minus 10%. And again, I have to do it on both sides. Let's delete the Axis, I don't need that. I'm going to remove the grid lines as well. As a last step, I'm going to bring these data labels inside the bottom stack. So there is a setting that you can say label options inside a base. And I'm going to repeat that for the other ones. Now the totals, I could also change them to bold to make them really stand out. And the same for the axis. That's pretty much it. We can add a chart title equals this. Now just to make it obvious that this bottom part is the new apps, what I can do is to bring this in a little bit, click on my chart so that it's activated, go to insert and insert a text box. Come here, click there and type in new apps. Now we can format this the way we want. I 
and push it right here. I fixed it in this case. I don't need it to be dynamic because the new apps part is always going to be on the bottom of this chart. But it just might make it more obvious to the people that this bottom part is the contribution of the new apps to the entire revenue. And because I activated the chart before I went and I insert a shape, it's already a part of my chart. I don't need to group anything together. So the moment I move this, this text is going to come with it, just like the chart title comes with it. This was one way on how you can create a clustered stacked column chart in Excel. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates when new videos like this one come out.